Let's talk about an interesting feature of the modern internet that's called a meet me room. So what problem are these designed to solve? Uh, and what is a meet me room? Remember, routing on the internet is done between these autonomous systems. So I might have autonomous system A um, and autonomous system B. Um, frequently, networks like the University of Buffalo, how do we get data out to the broader internet? We uh, contract with internet service providers and they, we basically connect to their autonomous system, which is frequently much, much bigger than ours, and we send any traffic that's destined for the broader internet out onto that big autonomous system. So let's imagine that both A and B have, um, are using internet service provider C that runs its own autonomous system. And so what they do is if A wants to get traffic to B, it sends a message. Um, the, the router in A exchanges data with the router in C. That message might travel through C's network and then emerge at B. And so this is normal and this is the typical arrangement particularly if A and B uh, are geographically uh, separated. So if A is on one side of the country and B is on the other side of the country, eventually traffic from them is going to go through some large internet service provider that's going to, uh, to make sure that those packets transmit the long distance between these two autonomous systems. However, what about if these two autonomous systems are actually located in the same city? In that case, routing through this large ISP can actually be really wasteful because this large ISP may not understand that these two autonomous systems are close by and sending traffic from A to B now has this expensive process of routing through C when in reality it might be simpler for A and B to just establish a direct connection between each other. Um, and this can be, if, if these two autonomous systems are close geographically, this can actually not be that hard. And so this leads to this concept of a meet me room, also known as an internet exchange point or a carrier hotel, uh, which has, sounds a little sketchy to me. But um, the idea is that in big cities like Toronto, New York, other places, um, what, uh, people will establish a place for network providers in the area to meet up. It's a place where they can run a, net, uh, a, a cable from their network into this room, a meet me room, and they can then peer with a bunch of other autonomous systems, other computer networks that are nearby. And that can avoid, uh, for geographically proximate networks, these long round trips that they might experience if they go out onto an, uh, another ISP that runs a much, much bigger autonomous system. So for example, in New York City, you might have a bunch of universities. Each university operates its own network, its own autonomous system, rather than hoping that that my internet service provider does the right thing and doesn't route traffic between New York University and Columbia all the way out uh, across the eastern seaboard, um, those universities might run cables just directly into a meet me room uh, where those where they can hook up together. Um, one of the, the so there's a there's a big internet an exchange point in Toronto. It's an interesting example of internet infrastructure that's actually uh, fairly publicly visible. It's known as the Toronto Internet Exchange. Um, um, it's a not-for-profit. Uh, it's located in, it refers to a carrier hotel, and the, the address of this place is, is right on, right on their, their website. Um, this talks about sort of some of the networking facilities they have, um, and here are some of the members, uh, Google, Akamai, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Yahoo, Hurricane Electric, Limelight Networks. So these are examples of uh, companies that operate networks in Toronto that have decided, let's, collect, let's connect our networks in Toronto together using this facility so that we can uh, shorten the number of hops that local traffic takes to uh, travel between our networks. And so um, this is the picture on Google Maps. This is 151 Front Street West. Uh, uh, this is kind of another example of something that you can identify using Google Maps as clearly being a data center. There's all of this cooling equipment on the roof, uh, which is pretty typical. Um, but I thought this was kind of interesting because this is, and a lot of these places are not necessarily um, so publicly advertised. But this is an example of a place that you could visit. Uh, I mean, you could visit the building. I'm sure they wouldn't let you inside. Um, but again, the goal here is to shorten.
shorten the connections between multiple autonomous systems and avoid long round trips. I read something about the Toronto Internet Exchange that actually some of the networks in Toronto noticed that their traffic, into, you know, they, if, if two networks in Toronto run maybe by different companies, if they wanted to send packets back and forth, they noticed the traffic was actually going through the United States. Uh, it was actually traveling all the way into a core network operated by a US ISP and then back up. And it's just, that's just dumb. You know, it makes uh, the latency higher and things like that. They also might have concerns about the traffic entering the United States because of security reasons and other things. Uh, so this is what a meet me room is.